seated in the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. We thank God for 2013 Resurrection Sunday. Amen. The time to celebrate. Praise his holy name. It's a time to celebrate his coming up on out of the grave. Yeah. And because of it, we have everlasting life. Yeah. We have eternal life. Yeah. And it is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. I am so glad today to see your lovely faces. You look great, Apostle. Your smiling faces. I'm so happy to see you looking so wonderful in your Easter outfits. And we have a few hats. And we have no hats. Except I see my wife, she looks so wonderful today. I tell you, people of God, we got something to praise God for. Amen. It's good to see the Malloys back from all the way down. They're in cigar country. <laughs> Amen. The Lord kept them safe and sound yeah. while they were there. No mishaps, but safe and sound. Uh, there's so many wonderful things that we can talk about. You speak about Resurrection Sunday, it's not gloom and doom, but there's just so many wonderful things, and there are so many messages that can be extracted from this great celebration, so many messages, because when he rose from the dead, he did so many wonderful things for you and I. Yes. And so therefore we have something to thank God for. Amen. We have something to praise God for. Amen. And we have no need to be gloomy or doomy. But we have every, every, every right to just thank and praise God and dance before Him because of his goodness and because of his grace. Uh, when we have these celebrations, there's so many um, sidekick, maybe if I would use that word, sidekick subjects we could use. And scriptures that we could go to, such as Christmas time, and priest at one time, Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> Mary had a little lamb, and uh, we could go on and on and on about the sidekick subjects that we uh, have preached about in times past, in the years past. You think about it, the Lord has brought us through the years and he has given us a word of expression and a word of encouragement. And so we have no need, no need to cry. We have every, every right to just thank God and dance before him because of his goodness and because of his grace. Amen. 
but the day is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We celebrate, we celebrate, we celebrate, we celebrate uh, him rising and raising, coming up from the grave on the third day. And how he came up out of the grave for you and I and brought eternal life to all of us. Today I'm going to come from a different angle. I'm going to come from Acts because, because of his coming up from the grave. I'm going to be coming from Acts because all through his life leading to the grave, our Lord and our Savior uh, was constantly reminding the church that he was going to come again and that uh, he was going to come with uh, a word from on high and he was going to come bringing us and giving to us another comforter. That's what I want. Another comforter. In Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1, it says, can you all get it please? Acts 2, verse number 1, verses number 1 through 10. Let us stand and read that together. Because this reflects the Resurrection Sunday. Let's all stand and whatever version you have you read, read in that version. I'm reading from the King James Version. Verses 1 through 10, chapter 2. Let us begin at number 1. Read uh, together. Let us begin. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all on our board in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared to them clothed with tongues, like a fire, and they sat upon each other. Another celebration that we could celebrate here. You know, Christmas, we have, uh, 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 the 
have Resurrection Sunday, and here you, you can celebrate Pentecost Sunday. So, but and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. The people of God were in one place, and they were one accord. They had their uh, thoughts and their minds focused on one thing. And that was what, that was the words that Christ left while he was being crucified, before he was crucified. And those words were, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, but I will send you the comforter. I will send you the comforter. Uh, it says, and then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Yes, sir. And suddenly, that's what we're going to preach on today. Suddenly, suddenly, that suddenly hit me. walking somewhere doing my daily exercise and all of a sudden I heard the word sudden sudden Can you that? that's terrible sudden 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 amen now uh, all throughout the Old Testament we uh, can reflect and hear the words of suddenly yes. in the word of God. Uh, in Psalms, Psalms 64, <laughs> Psalms 64, oh praise his name, Psalms 64. Verse number one it says, Hear my voice, O God. <laughs> Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. <clears throat> Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Now that's that's it. we want God to hear our voice yes, while we are praying. <coughs> Lord, I want you to hear my voice. That is so so important to know that God is hearing your voice. Yes. Because when you're praying, you don't want to be praying amiss. You don't want to be praying uh, and not get any results. You want results from your prayer. So you're saying, you're saying here, hear my voice, oh God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. We want God to preserve our lives from fear of the enemy. He goes on to say, hide me from secret counsel of the wicked and from the uh, insurrection of the workers of iniquity who wet the tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect that they may shoot in secret at the perfect at the perfect suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not then it goes on to say they encourage themselves in evil matter and they com they commune of laying hands privately, they say, who shall see them? They search out 
iniquities and they accomplished a delinquent search uh, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep but God but God but God whose but God shall shoot at them with an arrow suddenly shall they be wounded but God shall shoot them with an arrow when we pray we want God to hear our prayers yes. we want God to hear our prayers with respect to the enemy that comes to fight us that comes to uh, 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 snare us that comes to uh, destroy what we have built that comes to just tear everything up uh, to come that comes to destroy our thoughts and our 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 our, our plans that comes in every way to to bring and bring destruction with him. It says here, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow, suddenly shall they be wounded. Suddenly shall they be wounded. So there's the word suddenly again. Suddenly shall they be wounded. Suddenly on the day of Pentecost, suddenly, amen, there was a, 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 a sound as a, of a rushing mighty wind. And it goes on to talk about that suddenly uh, in Psalms 64 and 7. And then in Psalms uh, number 6, in Psalms number 6, Psalms number 6, praise the name of the Lord, Psalms number 6. It goes on in Psalms number 6. Uh, it says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. You know, uh, you know God can get angry. I want you to know he can get angry. But we don't want God to rebuke us in his anger. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave who shall give thee thanks? If God would take our lives, there is no remembrance of the Lord in death. Those people out there in the cemetery, they don't remember God. There's no going on where they remember God uh, in death. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Some people may believe that there's a great praise service underneath the ground. But I want you to know, no, once, as far as this flesh is concerned, once it's over, it's over. Yeah. Amen. And when you put in that ground, it is over. Yeah. And so that, uh, you know, <laughs> that will not, cannot give pleasure to the Lord. Amen. Amen. He goes on to say, have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, and deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death, as I said before, there is no remembrance of thee, and in the grave, who shall give thee thanks? I am weary with groaning all the night. Make I my bed to swim. I ward my couch with my tears. 
mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old uh, because of all mine enemies. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and sore back. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. So we want the uh, 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 Lord to be ashamed suddenly. Let it happen quick. I want you to know that we serve a God who is, he does not procrastinate. Thank you. People may procrastinate, but God does not procrastinate. Amen. When God moves, he moves quickly. Yeah. And he moves suddenly. Yeah. Oh yes, God moves suddenly on your behalf. Yeah. God moves suddenly on my behalf. Yeah. God does not take his time, but he moves suddenly in our lives. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. We have we have things that we uh, put up before the Lord and we want the Lord to uh, deliver us from. We want God to move uh, on our behalf. Yes, he's going to do it. Amen. And where it may seem, and I'm speaking mainly to the ones who, amen, have uh, 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 things before the Lord that they want God to do. And it may seem like God is not doing them. It may seem like God is not answering your prayer. But I want you to know that God is going to do it and it's going to happen suddenly. But when he does move, he moves suddenly. And I get a witness today. He moves suddenly in our lives. He moves suddenly in your life. God will move in your life and he will do it suddenly. Somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord. Oh yes, yes, yes. Suddenly. Now, that word suddenly is just it is so awesome. It is so awesome. Amen. I want you to, even in your own leisure, to, to look it up and to do research on it. Amen. Because it is so powerful to know that God is going to move suddenly in your lives. Amen. Uh, in Mark 9 and 8, it says, And suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only, with themselves. It was at Mark 9, Mark 9. You go to Mark 9. Mark 9. Uh, Mark 9. After Mark. Mark is right after Matthew. says in Mark 9 it says and he said unto them verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here with shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days, and after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And 
he was transfigured before them, and his raiment uh, became shining and exceeding white as snow. So, as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to have been here, but let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he wist not what they say. For they were uh, sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. Hear him. And suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. Amen. So God moved in that sense suddenly. He knew he had to move suddenly in order to uh, bring some kind of Correction to these guys who felt that they should build a tabernacle, one uh, for Elijah and one for Moses. And, and, and uh, uh, he moved suddenly so that they would see the correct order in which God was going to move. I want you to know, people of God, God is not a God that confuses us. No. Whatever he's going to do, he's going to do. Yeah. Now, people of God, I want you to know that God is moving even in this year. Yeah. He is moving in 2013. I know that we have said it time after time, and I know that you've heard it. You have heard it. You have heard us say God's going to move. God's going to move. And you uh, may not have seen the God move in the order that you would want him to move. However, our God is a God of order, and he will move. If he said he's going to move, he will do just that. God is going to move. And in fact, God has proven himself by already moving in our lives. He's already moved in the church. He's already moved in the body of Christ. And we have every reason to give God the thanks and give him glory for what he's already done. Amen. So people of God... You've got to get it in your spirit that God's going to move, but it's going to happen suddenly. 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 Praise his name. God's going to open up the windows of heaven suddenly. Somebody say suddenly. Hallelujah. God's going to provide the funds in your life suddenly. Praise the name of the Lord. God's going to touch your body and heal your body, but it's going to happen suddenly. Can I get a witness? It may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Suddenly, suddenly, I thank the Lord that I know him as a suddenly God. Praise the name of Jesus. He'll open doors for me suddenly. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Suddenly, suddenly, my, 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 
We have people in here who have loved ones who are sick and you feel as though that they're going to leave here. They're going to die. Oh no, they're not going to die. They're not going to die past what God has already ordained. But it's going to is healing is going to happen suddenly. Can I get a witness? And suddenly the sick is going to rise up from the, the bed and they're going to be healed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Suddenly God is going to do it. Praise the name of the Lord. I thank God for his work happened suddenly. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I thank God that I serve a God who moves suddenly. Isn't there, isn't there a worldly song named Suddenly? I thought there was. <laughs> well, I, even if there was, even if there was. Even if there was, <laughs> the world always tries to hang on the tails of the church and, 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 and tries to follow after the church. But I want you to know right now, the God I serve, he's a suddenly God, and he's a God that is going to move suddenly. And there's no other, it's just, there's no other uh, one that can follow after God, follow after Christ. There's no one that can follow after, or I, I may say mimic God, or mimic Christ. There's no other one. Our God is a God who is real. He is real. Amen. He's real in our lives. Yes. That's why we, we can sing the song, real, real, Jesus is real to me. Amen. Oh, yes, he gives me victory. So, uh, suddenly God's going to move in your life. People of God, we got to hold on to this suddenly in our lives. We got to hold on to it. Amen. And know that God's going to fix it. And it's going to be all right. Amen. Suddenly, God's going to come to our move. He's going to come, amen, and work things out for us. Praise the name of the Lord. God is going to move in our lives. Praise the name of Jesus. People, believe God today. Believe him. Believe him. For suddenly, God's going to come and fix it. Oh, yes, he is. He's going to fix it today. I want you to know, I know he'll fix it because he fixed it for me. He fixed it for me. Suddenly he came. About three weeks ago when I was in the hospital, all the doctors were saying, well, you know, things don't look too good. You know, you, you, you're, <laughs> you, you, you're not doing all that hot. You just might as well settle yourself, settle yourself down to uh, enjoy the days that you have. I said, the devil is alive. The devil is alive because I serve a suddenly God. A suddenly God. You're right in the midst of all their talk. Suddenly, the Holy Ghost came. Suddenly, yeah. hallelujah, he came in like a mighty flood and healed my body and he touched my body. Oh yes, suddenly God did it and God can do it for you. Oh yes, he can. Hallelujah. Praise his name. You know, man, man wants to be God. He tries to be God. And he tries to mimic God. He wants to be God in every sense. So he'll lie to you and say, 
yes, uh, your, your, your father's not going to, your father's not going to live. Your father's only got a few days. He only has a few days. So you might as well enjoy the time that you have with him. Now, yeah, just enjoy the time that you have with him because he, he's only got a few more days left. Well, people of God, God fixed it for me. If he fixed it for me, he'll fix it for you. Now, I know he'll, he fixed it for me because he just didn't fix it for me last week, but he fixed it for me 30 years ago when I was sick and in the hospital. And the doctor says, you're not going to work anymore. You'll never preach anymore. He said, you don't preach. No work, no preaching. Just quit. Just quit. Enjoy the time that you have. I said, the devil is a liar. If I have to preach and drop dead while I'm preaching, I'm going to preach the word of God. But I said, but still, I know a God that is a giver of life. And so, I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand. And because I held on to his hand, because I did like David the psalmist, I prayed and asked God to please answer my prayer. God came and he answered my prayer. And he healed my body. And he made me whole. Oh, for that, I'm happy. And for that, I'm glad. I can say like the writer said, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. And so God fixed it. And he healed my body. God can heal your body. God can heal your loved one's body. God can heal. He can heal your children. Hallelujah. He can, he can heal your children. He can heal anybody. All you have to do is believe and trust him. Yes. <coughs> Praise his name. The Bible says, for the enemy comes but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he says, but I am come. For I am come. That you might have life. And have it more abundantly. So I thank God for everlasting life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Suddenly. Suddenly. God touched my body. And he healed my. He healed me from the crown of my head souls of my feet. God touched me and he healed me. I thank God that he did it again. And I'm so happy for it. Hallelujah. Praise his mighty name. Thank you, Jesus.
understand what we're talking about today. I, I hope that you understand that the God we serve is a suddenly God. He moves. He doesn't drag his feet. But he moves suddenly in our life. Let us all stand.